Hello everyone and welcome back to PCA's Garage. Believe it or not, this is Tech Tactics Live, episode 10. We've done 10 of them already. So uh, for those of you that uh, first time visitors to Tech Tactics Live, welcome. Uh, today we're gonna be talking about a Porsche Classic radio, more specifically the Porsche Classic communications management system. Uh, more on that in a little bit. If you like the, tonight's video, please be sure to press like, be sure to subscribe to our channel, and of course, please comment um, pluses and minuses, and if you have questions about the product or about the uh, uh, episode tonight, we'll try to answer all of them, if not tonight, over the next couple of days. We're here at PCA's garage. It, uh, we're still uh, at the office here under a restriction, about 50% of our employees. For those of you that are visiting us for the first time, I'm, only, I'm the only one in the garage with two cameras and we have one person on the other side of the office that's managing all the electronics. So camera angles and such are pretty limited, but it's still gonna be a fun time if you can tell from my bench here, we've got a lot of stuff to go over. Um, but before we get into the radio, I just want to give you a quick update on Project 964. Uh, two episodes ago, we did a, a paint correction episode, and we finished the paint correction on the car last week. It was a PCA staff project, and we knocked it out in an hour or so, and the car is looking fantastic. So it looks good. Um, we don't know if it runs just yet, because we, we don't want to start it without fully going through it, um, but it, it, it's looking pretty good. So in terms, of, in, in terms of the interior of the car, it still needs some work. In terms of the stereo of the car, it's pretty, it was pretty bad. Actually, I have it in front of me here. Here's what was in it, and I think we have some photos of uh, it inside the car and sort of the spaghetti mess that was in the dash. And it's, it's not uncommon that um, you know, cars of this vintage have 90s uh, era, uh, radios and um, you know they've just you know this is a cassette when was the last time you used a cassette and I'm sure all the internals of the cassettes are old this had a 10 disc CD changer which was super popular then but 10 CDs are not enough for radio um, and I know a lot of people you know have upgraded their cars but the, the, the unique thing before we fully go into the the classic radio is Radio options for these cars are, are kind of limited in, in the sense of ones that match the car. Certainly you can go to your big box electronic store or buy online. It is a traditional single DIN radio, D-I-N radio, and uh, you can put anything in there. But most of today's radios are very glitzy with LEDs and jumping lights and, and knobs and buttons that don't match the interior of the car. There are a couple of, you know, that, that Kenwood one is really digital looking and that wouldn't really fit into the interior of this 964. Um, the Blaupunk radios, people have been going back to those, you know, for the OEM look. But again, you know, you're not gonna be listening to a cassette. They're old, you know, the, the power supplies in them aren't reliable anymore. Uh, so going back to an old radio is like that isn't really going to be for listening purposes. Um, and I know people are going to say, oh, the only thing you need to listen to is the exhaust out of your air-cooled car. I get it, but that's kind of like listening to the same song throughout the whole movie. I mean, I like the sound of the exhaust, but not like for an hour trip or, you know, a long ride. I like to have my tunes, you know, um, playing through, you know, Spotify, Pandora, endless, you know, your own playlist or whatever. Uh, so I got to have good tunes. And so that's where the Porsche Classic Radio comes in. And I'm super excited. So let me first introduce um, two people, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the radio and where we're going with it. So the first person I'd like to introduce, uh, he and I uh, often hang out a lot at PCA uh, events, and uh, we're always talking about cool classic items that are coming up and about. And that is uh, Porsche's, Porsche Classics business manager, Bucky Melvin. What's up, Bucky? All right. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we actually have a special guest all the way from Porsche AG. So hopefully the video feed will work. Peter, are you there? having me in the show. 
My name is Peter and I'm the product manager for the PCCM at Porsche Classic. There you go. Hey, Bucky, you may sh make sure your mic is unmuted because it might be. So thank you for Bucky and Peter for joining us tonight. Um, again, I'm super excited about car audio. I just go a little bit uh, to my background. Believe it or not, in the early 90s, I competed in car stereo competitions. And I have a couple of classic pictures of me competing in what's known as IASCA <laughs> events. That was the uh, East Coast Nationals. If you look, there's a gold Fiero, believe it or not. That's my gold Fiero, my first car, uh, pretty big audio system. There I am being judged for sound quality and judges are inside. This is my second IASCA car. This is my 1992 Mustang. And that's the trunk of my 92 Mustang with two 15 inch clamshelled woofers with it about a thousand uh, watts there. So uh, there's the interior of my uh, Fiero and all the amps and such. So yeah, I'm just sharing that with you to, to, sh to show you how much I love audio and, and the fact that we can get a really cool radio that matches the interior of our classic Porsches is very exciting. Um, but first, Bucky, if you don't mind, would you share with folks how, how does Porsche Classic decide to make a radio, right? I mean, you guys are making part, typical parts uh, for Porsches, but how do you go about making a radio? Well, you know, Boo, um, I think everybody would be a little surprised at the amount of complexity there is in making fenders or trim, but uh, developing a radio is um, definitely something that keeps you busy. It's a highly technical process involving many of the team members uh, that can take actually years to complete. Um, just as an example, uh, the airbag sensors for your 964 took over three years to develop and bring back to the market. Wow. So sorry about that. I think it, it says Peter there uh, under your little name or your name thing, but we'll, we'll make sure that's right for you. Uh, this is Bucky that's talking. There you go. All right. Yeah. So, I mean, again, back in the day, Porsche was installing Blaupunk radios. It, it was not really their focus. It was all about performance, the engine, the car and they were installing Blaupunks into the cars back then. And for you guys to take sort of the step, the leap to, to make a classic radio that matches the interior of our cars and have all of the conveniences, modern day conveniences that you would like to have on a radio, that's pretty cool. Now this, um, let me grab this radio here. Okay, so this is the Porsche, uh, this is the most recent model, the classic communication management one, uh, the recent model. Now, we did have the very first edition. I think it was Bucky, it was like four years ago or three years ago you showed it to me. And you, I probably giggled like a little kid. But um, here's, here's the, the, the Porsche Classic, uh, I think it was called the Porsche Classic Radio Navigation 2 or PCRN2. And we installed this in a 993 and if you guys wanna see how that was installed. We still have that video on YouTube. I think it has 48,000 or some hits. Um, but this is the, the first edition, and this is the current edition. So after the 993 install, Bucky, you and I had chatted, and um, you know I shared with you my thoughts. And when this new one came out, would you share with our, with our viewers how our conversation actually went all the way back to AG. Well, Lou, um, we listen to all the enthusiasts uh, at events and everywhere. So, of course, your enthusiasm kind of pegs the needle. So uh, your feedback wasn't going to fall in deaf ears. Uh, our conversation at the Ontario Tech Tactics actually directly influenced the development of the first unit, and it even carried over to the current unit. So the 993 install was really plug and play. That was a bone stock 993 with a, you know, a, an OEM radio that we had um, basically pulled out that radio and plugged it into the new one. Uh, but let me show, if I can get my staff to show uh, the beginning of the install of the new radio into this 964, they'll probably just scroll through a couple of pictures. But as I showed you earlier, um, unfortunately, this car had an aftermarket radio in it, and it had this spaghetti uh, behind the dash. And um, turns turns out 
this car has a factory amplifier underneath of the seat, which was not the worst thing. But when I saw the wires, there's a spaghetti that you see there. Um, what the previous installer did was they, they chopped up the DIN cable, the factory DIN cable, and put RCA plugs onto it. And, uh, and then it was fed into the factory radio. And then, of course, the new radio that we have here just has speaker level output. So I kind of, I haven't done this in a while, although I was in car audio for a while. I haven't done this in a while, and I sort of sort of panicked. And, um, but I did notice in the box you included plugs that we can create our own harnesses. So I found the radio underneath the seat, and I found where the speaker wires were as opposed to the DIN, uh, the DIN input, and I created two harnesses. And hopefully we can take a look at the harness pictures. They are the ones with the little pins and... Um, I hadn't built a harness, actually I hadn't never built a harness before, it's always been provided to me, done. So those are the speaker leads and then inside the, the box of the new radio you'll see uh, there's two plugs and uh, a bunch of little metal harness pieces and you can create your own harness and uh, that's what I did. So in, let me show you real quickly what I did here. So. Let me come around, if you don't mind. Do, 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 do. All right. So this is how the factory was set up, with the radio, the factory amp, and four speakers. And with the new radio, I had to bypass all this. So I just went, ch -ch -ch went directly there, and we got rid of the amp. And the reason being is you could, you could reuse that amp, but it's old, and it's been sitting underneath that seat. Who knows? Um, how long it uh, you know might last and actually Bucky if I'm not mistaken the new amplifiers in these radios are probably better sounding than the old ones yeah actually uh, you never know what you're gonna get with the old one um, so the new one of course has 45 watts per channel so that's uh, fairly strong and clean uh, if you have any degradation in the old unit uh, it'll carry through and actually decrease the quality so yeah Exactly. Oh, by the way, uh, there's always something to win, and Bucky and Porsche Classic gave us two Porsche Classic motor oil bags. We're giving away two tonight. So in order to uh, be in the raffle to win these, all you have to do is in the live chat, make sure you put your name and where you're from. We'll draw the winner around 8.30, and we'll let folks know at the, um, at the end of the show. So, Bucky, let's um, let's let me let me move this old '90s radio. Excuse me. All right, and let's uh, let's compare the new Porsche Classic uh, radio or the PCCM versus the PCR N2. And I did an unboxing video here. And you can just kind of talk through it while folks are watching the unboxing video. Okay. Um, so at first glance on the faceplate, you'll notice the voice command icon next to the left rotary knob. Uh, in addition, the names of the buttons have changed a bit. So you'll notice that the home hard key uh, has replaced the map hard key. And from the top view, compared the uh, old one to the new one, you can see the size of the new unit seat sink has increased dramatically to accommodate an increase in processing power. Oh, yeah. So I think I have some pictures of the comparison of the, the, um, the radios. Robert, if you can try to bring those pictures up. We can, uh, we can bypass the uh, video if you want. So in the video here, we're just taking, taking it out of the box and showing all the components. But what I notice immediately is take a look at how much more, this is the new one, this is the older one, and how much more venting there is in the chassis. And then also uh, take a look, yep, you can see the two radios there, and look at the different size and the, the larger heat sink uh, for processing power, right, Bucky, for the new one? I mean, that's a, that's yes. a sizable difference. That's pretty awesome. Um, and all the plugs and such in the back. So let's, uh, bef 
before I let's see du, 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 du. before I go over to Peter let's do a true or false true or false number one Robert can you bring that up for me please can one use the PCRN2 map material for the PCCM and vice versa I think uh, Peter's going to answer that question can we do that The PCCM material is only intended for the PCCM, but in the future. So the answer to that question, there you go. We will continue to offer map updates for the PCRN2. Robert, how are we doing? The answer was false. So, Bucky, the map material is very specific to the PCCM that it belongs to. That is correct. Uh, it's uh, actually, the map data can go from PCCM to PCCM, uh, but it cannot be used on a PCRN2. Gotcha. All right, so let's try one more true and false. Number two, can one access the onboard media or onboard navigation while Apple CarPlay is running? True or false? And I think Peter can answer that. When Apple CarPlay is running, the hard key snuff and media lead to Apple CarPlay. As you can see here, we are now in Apple CarPlay and with the NAV button, you go to Apple CarPlay, in this case, Google Maps. If you want to access the onboard navigation, go via home and then the soft key map. And now you're on the onboard navigation. And for the onboard media as well, go to the home screen, select media, and in this case, micro SD card, and then you are in the onboard media. True. We certainly can. All right, so let's see. Um, we did the unboxing video, but then Peter's going to share with us kind of what's new inside the box. First, the new version has a different design. There is also an aux port and two USB ports. The left USB port is intended for playing music via USB stick, and the iPhone is connected to the right USB port phone. To use Apple CarPlay, and Apple CarPlay only works with this USB port. To ensure a smooth data transmission, we had to shorten the connection cable of the new media box. All right, let's talk about the major differences, Peter. Did we lose Peter there? So one of the things I know Peter was going to talk about was about the capacitive versus resistive touchscreen on the new radio. And I didn't know what, what that was. And I think I need Bucky to dial back in. I'm sorry, guys. I don't know if our connection is as bad. So Bucky, if you can hear me, if you could dial back into the, uh, the conference system. Can you hear me? or? Oh, I can hear you. Okay, you're okay. still there. Okay, cool. So anyways, uh, Robert, can you talk, bring up capacitive versus resistive touchscreen? So capacitive is really conductive, right? And it's like your typical smartphone screen, very sensitive and such. And resistive is pressure related. So it's like those groceries, um, credit card machines where you have to use the pin and kind of 
press really hard for it to work. So that's a major upgrade from the old system, Bucky? Yes. Yeah, the uh, resistive screen going to capacitive, that's, um, that's a substantial upgrade. It's yeah. a much better screen, much better clarity, um, much better, uh, uh, it's, it's more uh, reactive. So when you touch it, you get a little more, um, uh, it's, it's a much better experience. Yeah. So let's pull up some, uh, Robert, if you can pull up some of the pictures of the install, I'll just kind of walk through people, uh, walk through people, <laughs> walk people through what I did on the car. Um, again, disconnecting the, the battery first as you're di digging into the wires of the dash, pulling out the radio, um, the old radio, which was just barely sitting in there. The cage actually for the old radio was only, um, the, you know, wasn't really held in. Um, this is the new cage going in, and I'm making sure that I'm putting all the tabs. Uh, that is the old amplifier where I found uh, the speaker wires. That is the uh, new speaker wires uh, connected up down and left down at the seat. That's me running the GPS to the corner of the dash and tucking in the wires behind the dash. And that's tucking it all in be, uh, behind the trim. And that's the uh, before the radio goes in. So a lot neater, which I'm proud to say. Um, actually, we can show, show this wire. Uh, that's actually, that's a picture of how to, although the, the, the speaker leads are labeled, I use a little nine volt battery to kind of pop the speakers to know which speaker leads are going to which speaker, just to confirm everything. Because sometimes when people, um, change things out, they mess it up. And those are the, those are the leads uh, into the harness that I made. And uh, that was a lot of detail work, but it was a lot of fun. So that was after I soldered them and getting them ready to go in the plugs. Now they're inserted in the plugs and ready to be used. Robert, if you could come back to me on, on the bench here. All right, so this is pretty cool. Um, so I, I hadn't really used this back in the day. So because I was bypassing the factory amp, I needed speaker wires to go all the way down to uh, underneath the seat uh, all from the middle of the dash and right all the way down. So uh, my, my family used to actually have a, a car stereo shop and they had some materials that I could swing by and grab. This is a nine conductor eight gauge wire, nine conductor eight gauge wire. And in this one piece, I have all my speaker wires that I need. And it's all in the, um, you know, the universal colors for speakers, you know, the, the white, white, black. And um, this all actually, all these colors correspond in the, the Porsche Classic manual here. And this was really handy because when I was utilizing, maybe you guys can see it here on the closer shot, it has, yeah. So it has all the pin locations and what color wires and the wires in here matched exactly to this, this cable. So it really helped out. And uh, Bucky believed in me and I got it done, Bucky. Good job, Boo. <laughs> all right. And so then um, running the microphone uh, up above and tucking them. The, this car, you know, unlike modern day cars, th these Jeep body cars, I mean, other than the carpet kind of laying on top of the floorboard, it's, it's really easy to run wires. And I just kind of ran down the backside of um, uh, the bulkhead behind the dash and then down the center tunnel and just took a, took a left, I guess, to the passenger seat and connected all the radio wires there. Um, because there's no, there's not much of a bottom to the, the dash of uh, these G-body cars, I often see, and, and, and if you follow PCA's e-brake news and Mark Fresh, the car that I picked this week was a, a G-body Targa, and you could see RCA wires kind of hanging <laughs> below the dash, and that's one of my pet peeves, is if you, you, know, you run wires, make sure you tuck them in nicely, use lots of zip ties, and um, you know, tuck them in and secure them, keep them out of, pr out of the way so you don't see it. Um, but let's go back to the Porsche radios. Uh, one of the things that is 
what I noticed also that was different were, were these two pieces here. So Bucky, you wanna, you wanna talk a little bit about these and what's changed about them? I think cable length is a big change. Yep, yep, so the cable length uh, is for the data integrity. Um, you'll notice that the new box has an AUX port, uh, like Peter showed earlier, um, and a USB port and a phone port. So it's actually um, uh, a different unit, so it works straight with the iPhone and the phone port. And the, the USB port can be used for uh, media. So if you have songs stored on a USB drive, uh, you can play them through there. And the USB port will actually still charge your phone if you don't want to use CarPlay. Um, so that's the main differences in the media box from the new one to the old one. Cool. Uh, someone asked, what's the cost of the new radio? Uh, the cost of the radio, the retail is 1300 I believe, and the maps uh, are separate. So they would have to, if they want the onboard nav to work, they'd have to pick up the, uh, the, the map SD card, and that's another 150 on top of the unit. And then what about connecting to like Sirius XM? SiriusXM, if you want to use their service, uh, you just go to your favorite retailer and get the SiriusXM tuner um, that'll plug into the back of it. It is a SiriusXM ready unit. Uh, it comes with the SiriusXM cable, so it'll okay. connect to the tuner plug and play. You can just have to uh, get the tuner on your own. Okay. Uh, let me see. I see there's a question from RW Abe. And, but actually, that might be a true and false question. So uh, true and false question number three. Let's go to that one. Can this radio be used in a 986, 996 that has a single DIN currently installed? Bucky, you want to answer that one? Absolutely, Lou. Um, so I've always believed uh, that anything is possible with enough time and money. Um, but the PCCM was only developed to operate in our air-cooled 911, 914, and the classic transaxle model range. Um, as you've likely seen from global press releases, there's a 2 din unit that has been released in Europe for the 996s, and it is currently being evaluated for the U.S. market. So the one you're talking about is that's the double din unit? Correct, the double din unit. It's called the PCCM Plus in the okay. European Union. So we don't know if it's coming stateside yet? Uh, we're still evaluating it for the market. Oh, wow. And I mean, I, I, when you say evaluate, people probably don't really understand. It's not like a question of yes, no, because you want it. I mean, there's a whole lot of regulations and FM you know, signaled like modifications to it to make it work in the US. That's why we can't just buy European radios and put, put them in our cars and vice versa because they operate differently. Yeah, there, there's quite a bit of um, differences between the, the EU unit and the US unit, even in the PCCM. Uh, so they have to be uh, developed and approved separately, um, kind of jointly and separately. Uh, but when they get to specifically for the US market or the North American market, uh, PCNA and PCL have to approve it. Um, and make sure that all the functions, uh, the translations, the manuals, software, uh, navigation, everything functions as it's supposed to in the market before it can be released. It's, it's a lot. Yeah, definitely. So that's why I want to make sure everyone understands it's not a, just a question of yes or no, we'd like to have it. There's a whole lot of uh, investment um, behind it if they, they bring it to market here in the States. Um, but just to back up to, to that question of installing in a 986, 996, we've actually done that here at PCA headquarters. Uh, Rob Sass, our Porsche Panorama editor. Um, oh, uh, so what's this question here? Is it compatible with 986 Boxster? Okay, so I'm gonna answer that question for you, Daniel. <coughs> so you can, you can make it work. Um, again, in the Porsche Classic, the Porsche Classic manual here on page 11, with the, that, that harness, that harness that I made, it tells you all the pin configuration, it tells you um, battery, um, antenna control, accessory, and ground, right? That's, that's gonna be very simple for you to find in your Boxster. And then it has the, all the, the pin locations for your speaker. 
So again, same thing, if you want it, it'll fit because it's a single DIN radio, it's a universal fit. Um, you just need to match up power, ground, accessory, um, and antenna control to your, to, your, um, to your speakers. And if you have an amplifier in your Boxster or your 986, you'll, you'll have to either get what's called a, um, a, a preamp line converter where it accepts a powered um, speaker level input and creates a line level output to utilize the, uh, the amplifiers that might be in your car. Or you can do what I've done with this car. If you're not running or need a lot of power, you can just bypass the car's amplifiers and run your speakers directly with the 45 watts that, that's built in. So there's your, there's your answer. Um, I think we have, let's see, uh, do we have our winners just yet? It's 8, 8.30, last chance. Make sure you've uh, put your, uh, your name and where you're from for the Porsche Classic motor oil bag. And again, thank you to uh, Bucky and uh, Porsche Classic for providing that to us. So if you don't mind, Bucky, I'm going to share with them some of the, the tools that I used for the install. And uh, then maybe after that, you can share some installation tips. Absolutely. Okay. All right. So every time, now this, this, this stuff might date me because, again, I, I was doing car stereo stuff in the, in the 90s and in the 2000s. But this is my, you know, one of my favorite tools. This is my uh, Bluepoint SST test light. And what's important about this test light is it's computer safe, meaning... Um, you can power it up uh, through your cigarette lighter or if you have another um, adapter that you can plug it directly to your battery, but um, you can probe your wires and it doesn't draw a current, it just tells you what's going on with those wires. And I think we have a video of me using this and when you probe it and you touch ground, the, um, the LED up here, that's the other video. Do you have the test light? There you go. So when I'm probing there, you can see the LED pop red, showing that that's hot. There's nothing there. There's hot, hot, and then there's ground. So it's a really, really cool. If you uh, do a lot of electrical stuff on your car, um, it's something you really want to invest in. And, and again, this is from back in the day. I'm sure the new test lights today are even more advanced and possibly even cheaper. All right, so that's one tool you'll need. You'll definitely need some panel. Uh, pan plastic panel uh, poppers. This is from Griot's Garage. Again, it's great for tucking in the wires or just uh, separating the panels just a little bit to get that gap. Uh, of course, uh, cutters and crimpers. Get a nice set because it makes a big difference. You'll need uh, wire strippers there. And this is a handy one that just kind of, it's an automatic wire stripper. And what I like about it is you just put the wire in, click, and it strips it, no problem. You can adjust the, the bite. Um, the razor blade comes in, in handy. And again, this nine volt battery I use to um, pop the, the speakers by connecting, just tapping the speaker leads to it and you'll hear the speaker react. And then you'll know that particular wire will go to um, which location, which speaker. Of course, your, your uh, your screwdrivers and such, and then my very favorite tool, my pick. And the pick here is important for when you're installing the, the cage of the radio and you need to bend over the tabs so that the cage stays nice and tight inside the radio. All right, so Bucky, how about you? Some, some tips for, uh, actually, before you go into your tips, Let's do the last true or false. Last true or false, there we go. This radio must be installed by a Porsche dealer. True or false? So Vu, that one's actually gonna be false. Um, we always recommend taking your classic to your nearest certified classic partner or authorized dealer, but the installation can also be done at home if you're comfortable with that type of job, as you just illustrated. Yeah, um, certainly the dealer, the Por Porsche Classic folks, they are well trained to take care of installing this for you. Um, you know, is the, the 993 install, as well as this install, 
you know, if, if you're fairly handy in the garage, you've worked with electronics before, it's certainly doable. But I think you need to understand that if you're taking this to someone to install in your car, it's not like installing a typical radio in a, you know, let's say a, a Corolla back in the, in the 90s or 2000s where it's just a swap in and out. Even though some things can plug and play, like this 964, you did find that there were things that we had to create the harness, we had to find the amp, and it can be pretty involved. Again, if, if you're handy and you've done this kind of stuff before, you certainly can do it at home, but if you're gonna take it to someone, just know it's gonna be some work for them. So let's see, uh, Jeff Moeller has a question for you, Bucky. What are the charge port, I think he means amperage rate, meaning like how, f how, how much power will it uh, charge the iPhone or the Android? Actually, I'll have to get back to him on that one. I have that question out there for uh, another reason entirely. So okay. uh, as soon as I get that answer back from Peter, I'll make sure I uh, pass it along to you. Yeah, we'll definitely answer questions, you know, at a later time as well. And I bet you I know why he's asking that, because I've had radios uh, in the past where they have a USB port and, you know, you're using it for navigation, you're using it to stream your, your, um, your music, and it barely holds the level of battery. It doesn't actually charge, right? You've, you've plugged it in, you know, most, most phone chargers, when you plug it into the car, you're thinking, okay, it's going to charge you know, to, to full uh, capacity within uh, maybe a 20 minute drive or something like that. But some, some radios, not just Porsche Classic, I, again, I don't know for sure, but you know, I've used, um, I have an old Kenwood in, in my Cayenne and uh, when I use it, it just kind of maintains that battery level. All right, uh, let's see, any other questions? Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, so John Colpin, PCA HQ, what is the best way to anchor the PCCM media box? So what he's talking about is what's the best way to anchor this? Um, and actually that's been sort of what I was looking at the car today, thinking about where I wanted to mount this. Now they do include, uh, I believe it's like Velcro or double stick tape that you can, you can mount it above um, the console uh, in front of your shifter. And that's sort of in plain view and can sit there. Personally, because I like sort of like a real, I, I know it's not gonna look completely stock because you have a new, newish radio in there, but underneath the radio, I mean, I'm sorry, underneath the dash, I found that there is a flat metal box um, and I don't know what it is, to be honest with you, but if, you f if you're on the passenger side footwell and just look all the way up to the bulkhead, you'll see this box. It, it holds something. Uh, but anyways, it fits this pretty, pretty neatly. And what I would do, or what I plan to do, is I plan to do uh, like 3M uh, double stick tape, with maybe like fender tape, which is actually very strong as opposed to your regular white foam tape. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna mount it all the way like deep into the recess of the foot well, just because I'm gonna run my own small, um, small USB uh, iPhone cable to wherever it, it needs to go. I don't really need to see this all the time. That's just sort of my preference. I don't know. Bucky, any, anything to add with that? And that's actually fairly common. Uh, if you know you're always going to use your iPhone, uh, you hide the media box somewhere it's not as important for accessibility. You just get a long enough lightning cable um, to be able to route it where you're going to have your phone all the time. Uh, if you're going to be using uh, another, if you can use it just as a charging base, uh, like if you have an Android, then you'll just run a USB cable out to your Android to be able to use it for charging um, and then hide the media box. It's, it's up to the user. There's some location recommendations uh, in the PCCM installation manual. Yeah, and another, um, another location that I considered was actually in the glove box because if you, if you, um, if you use a, um, a, a, a step drill bit, and of course make sure there's nothing 
uh, behind where you're drilling. Um, you, can draw, uh, you can drill a hole the size of this end and you can feed this wire and it can just come across and connect to the, um, the radio and back. And that's a, it's a pretty short run, but I think that was another location I was considering. But I didn't want to have to open and close the glove box. And again, I found that little, that little area. Someone, I think, online said it might be where the cruise control is. Um, so I'm just going to do that. I think that's a nice, clean, clean way to install it. And of course, there's suggestions of how to do it in the installation guide as well. So Vu, real quick, uh, Jeff did have another question. You want to know if it was in stores and the part number for it? OK, so, yeah, go ahead. Uh, there is some limited availability out there right now. Uh, we have sold out all of our initial production uh, until our next wave comes back in in a few more months. So if you're going to find one in a dealer that actually has one in stock, which is pretty rare right now, uh, the part number is going to be 911 645 591 Zero, zero. Cool. Uh, let's see, another suggestion online here for the uh, media box, um, Jack Colpin. Jack installed his and his 993 and put the media box in the ashtray, which that's pretty cool. That's pretty stealthy. I don't know if you have to modify the interior of the ashtray to make it fit. If you do, then that's a no-go for me. But you know, if you don't, that might be a cool place to do it. Um, other than that is, again, you know, securing it the way it uh, says in the book here. And then someone asked about, will this work in a 964? I'm sorry, not 964, 986, 944. And absolutely, again, that's a standard single DIN, um, single DIN uh, hole in the dash, and that'll fit in there. And the reason why I'm looking here is I'm actually looking at all of your questions. And that's why it's important for you guys to give us some questions here. Um, OK, connecting Bluetooth. So Bucky, you want to explain how people connect their Bluetooth to this? I mean, is it just like you know, any standard car, modern radio, you're looking for the Bluetooth? Um, in, in your app and then you just connect to it and then you can stream either your phone or your music through it? Correct. It's a standard Bluetooth uh, connection. You just pair it with your phone. Uh, once you're stopped, car's not moving, uh, you go through the options, go to the Bluetooth pairing menu and then search for your phone and then pair it with your phone just like you would any other radio. Okay, cool. And I think we have some winners here. Let me see if I can find the winners. Caden D and NTM4122. <laughs> so I guess I'm not going to know their real names, just their screen names. But Caden and NTM4122, make sure you send an, uh, an email to Damon and we'll get you your Porsche Classic motor oil bags out. All right, and let me go back here. So sorry, I had cut you off. Uh, Bucky, was uh, did we get into your install tips yet? Uh, no, I can give you some, um, I guess, five tips uh, now. I would say first you want to make sure you order the extra cable if the car was originally equipped with uh, and still has a functioning amplifier. Uh, there's two different cables depending on what kind of amplifier you have. So you want to order that separate from the unit. And of course, order the MAP SD card if you want to use the onboard Navi. Uh, second tip, if you are interested in using Sirius XM, you want to make sure you order that kit from your favorite retailer if you want to use their service, because you're going to want to run that satellite uh, antenna cable when you run your nav cable. You don't want to do it later. Um, third tip, I would say get acquainted with everything in the box. Uh, make sure you read your manuals and pay uh, close attention to the wiring diagrams, as you showed earlier. Um, fourth tip, plan your accessory locations, like you were talking about with the media box, uh, where you want to have your microphone and where you want both your, if you're doing both uh, Sirius XM and Navi, where you want your antennas to go. Uh, and then lastly, uh, ensure your speakers and amp are already operating as you would want them to before you change it over. Okay, so back to your, your first one about getting the cable if you have a good amplifier 
So are you saying that I didn't have to make that harness? I could have connect. I could have bought that DIN cable, or uh, no? You would. It's a small. I, I sent you a picture of it. It's a small adapter that goes to the DIN cable that you already have. So as you disconnect oh, okay. the original DIN cable from the radio, it'll yeah. adapt over to the back of this radio. Oh, okay. So it would have been an adapter to fit onto the existing DIN cable on this car, but because I only had half a DIN cable on this car, that wouldn't have helped me out. Exactly. Ah, okay, gotcha. All right. Um, let's see some other questions here. Ha, this one's kind of funny. Um, so after the install, what, uh, what song would you play on it? And so <laughs> this, is, this is not necessarily my taste in music, but when I was competing in car audio, one of the favorite sound quality car audio tracks at the time was, believe it or not, Paula Abdul's Rush, Rush, Rush. Now, don't judge me because of the song. I played it because <laughs> it was really good sound quality. The song's all right, but anyways, I thought that was a funny question. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I have a question. Go ahead. On the screen. Oh, uh, does this offer XM? So I think we we did answer that question before, but Bucky, you want to answer that again? Uh, so it is Sirius XM ready. So yes, you would have to buy the tuner, the tuner kit, uh, and then it comes with an adapter cable to be able to plug it directly in. It is not uh, already built into the system. It's XM, Sirius XM ready. Okay, gotcha. All right, so someone here, um, Arthur Rosenberg, had a question about his um, 993 CR210 and replaced it with a CDR220. And so that's just a radio upgrade from an older um, factory head unit to a newer one. If you were to move to this Porsche Classic radio, you'd actually take out that CDR220 and put this one in its place. And again, because that radio would not be a plug and play, you would have to build the harness, which comes in the box, and then with the harness that's inside your car, uh, have a radio shop, or again, if you're handy yourself, figure out the pin configurations and the speaker outputs and such. And let's see, I just got a text from, who is this? Nathan Mers, which had his favorite song uh, to play after install. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna mention what song that is. <laughs> um, all right, so the question about, and I thought we answered this, but people are still asking. So if you have a non-iPhone phone, like an Android or whatever out there, you can still use it with this radio, right, Bucky? It's still blue. It's it's Bluetooth. So yes, you can. It just doesn't. It you know, in terms of like uh, Apple CarPlay, you know, Apple that's a Apple product and it replicates sort of your phone on the screen. But as far as compatibility of this unit with all other phones, it certainly is compatible. Correct. It is a standard Bluetooth uh, connection, so it works with basically any phone. Android phones would connect over Bluetooth and they could use the USB uh, ports for charging. Um, it does not have Android Auto integrated, which is usually the, the common question. Yeah, um, certainly understand that. Again, it's not a question of you know saying yes, it can have it or no, it can't have it, but I gotta imagine in order to have that capability, it's a significant investment um, in building the piece and you know, I guess I'm sure you're your folks kind of figure out, you know, in terms of Porsche owners, what the more common platform and phones. Uh, but again, even if you don't have an iPhone, it certainly is capable to be used with this. So I guess my next question for you, Bucky, is what's next? Like, what will the third generation be? And can I offer some suggestions? Uh, well, <laughs> uh, as far as what's next, um, I would say, as we mentioned earlier, uh, Porsche Classic is a, it's a creative and it's a very technical team. Uh, we're always looking forward and working on projects to excite our customers. 
Uh, we're listening to all the feedback we receive, whether it's in person or via the feedback form available online. Uh, in fact, uh, I noticed in one of the links uh, below, if you go to the Porsche.com Classic website where the feedback form is, we also announce all of our latest parts and accessories. And there's even a dedicated Classic newsletter that you can sign up for to keep you informed of everything we do release. I think we have another question here coming up. Uh, typically, how long does it take for the install at the dealership? So that's, uh, it's kind of up to the customer and the technician of how they want to do the install. So if you wanted to do a very dry install and you didn't want to have onboard navy and connect the navigation antenna, you didn't want to do the external uh, microphone, uh, you didn't want Sirius XM, you just want to do bare bones head unit because you just want to use Bluetooth, uh, it can plug and play into a 983, you know, fairly quickly. Uh, if you decide that you want to run uh, the satellite uh, antennas all the way to the back of the car, you've got to go underneath the carpet, the more customized the installation is, the more the labor time goes up. So we don't have defined labor times uh, for any of the models. And since it fits everything from uh, the early F bodies all the way up to 993 and everything in between, um, there's quite a range. So I would say it's... Um, it's kind of between you and the technician to work out what you want. Yeah, and also it's going to be like this car. It depends on the condition of what you already have in there and how much they're going to have to work around or fix, so to speak, to make the new one, new one work. Um, so before we wrap up, I just wanted to share with folks sort of the, the next step for this project. Uh, all the wiring is done on the 964. This radio is ready to be plugged in and slid into the dash and locked in, but it's still playing to old, old speakers. And here we have um, the next set of speakers that will be going in it. And believe it or not, these are Porsche Classic OEM speakers. So you wanna say anything about these, Bucky? Yeah, actually, uh, we began to offer replacement speakers uh, with modern materials like synthetic membranes and neodymium magnets in 2016 for the for mini G-bodies for the 964 and for the 983. So they're a great addition to the last generation PCRM2 radio. And of course, they're a great complement to the new PCCM. Yeah, and I've got to imagine the speakers that are in this car are probably the, the surrounds are probably all dry rotted. Um, certainly I know the, um, the tweeters and, and the coverings and such are all, all well worn. Um, there's even space, spacers and speaker grill um, pieces that are available. And let me just quickly show the folks the front door speakers. And there you have um, your, mid, your door mid bay speakers as well as your tweeters there. So, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the top of the hour, and I want to thank Bucky and Peter for joining us. Uh, again, if you have questions in the, um, uh, in the live chat and we haven't answered them on, on live show here, we will answer them for you later. Please be sure to like, subscribe, comment. Caden and uh, NTM will get you your your prizes out and I uh, hope everyone stays safe and we'll see you next time. Bye.